we are here, we are live. And a couple of things I just need to tell you. First of all, you may notice that the bookshelf behind me, you know, I just gotta be honest, the pressure, it tells me how many viewers it has right now. It literally went from 18 to 91 to 115 and it grows. And I just wanna tell you, now that we're all here together, that this is absolutely, I promise you, the lowest level of production in all of, I think pretty much history, I think accurately I can say that. You'll notice the bookshelf behind me is not the one you saw last week. This is not in my office because like three minutes before we started doing this, and I, I, you can't even make this stuff up. Three minutes before we started, maybe like 15 minutes before we started, in my office, the Wi-Fi goes out. So what do we do? We can't do anything. We have no budget. We have no nothing. We just have this phone. And so we go to the one place where the Wi-Fi is working best in our house, in my seven-year-old's room. Yes, this fantastic, wonderful uh, show that we're putting on, Story Time with Brad tonight, is from my seven-year-old's room. My oldest son is here laughing at me. He's my helper tonight. And he said, Dad, this is the worst show ever. You have... And, oh, and, and right before I started speaking, my goggles actually broke. Um, in fact, these are aviation goggles. They're not swim goggles that I got from the pool outside. Um, these are real, and they broke. And so he's like, Dad, look at you. Your goggles broke. You're in your seven-year-old's room, and nothing's working. Your Wi-Fi's out. And I'm like, I love you, too. There's no better way to say it. To prove to you that this is my seven-year-old's room, not that you can't see it from all the Lego books that are behind me, but well, where else would you have Lego? Anyone know what this is called? Is it a TIE fighter, Jonas? It's a TIE fighter. Yes, it is. Um, so we have all good stuff here. And um, the other thing is, oh, if you're listening, if you tag someone in the comments today and say, hey, watch this. We're doing story time. Tag your friend. We will pick out one person who gets the full entire box set of all the I Am books. So you get I Am Abraham Lincoln, I Am Amelia Earhart, I Am, who else than that, Rosa Parks, and I Am Albert Einstein. You get all four of them in a nice gift box set. We're not just doing that because it could be a good gift for Hanukkah, Christmas. Hint, hint. My son actually laughed at that joke. That's a highlight for me. Um, but what I always said is, uh, again, I want to just welcome everybody here. And we, um, I want to thank our sponsors. I forgot to thank our sponsors. Actually, we have no sponsors. This is, again, the lowest budget show of all time. We have no sponsors. No one would ever pay us to do anything. Oh, boy. You know what I love? Pop chips. Pop chips are just... Um, that's a joke, too. I wish Pop Chips sponsored us. We won't even take your money, Pop Chips. You couldn't even get us to sponsor you. Pop Chips. And... Um, so welcome to our show. This is our second edition. I promise you, with each time we do this, um, I was going to bring a part of my own history from my own office. I was going to pull it right off my shelf because it's in my, right behind me. This is my very first book I ever wrote. It's my first novel. And um, my wife very sweetly had it bound in a nice leather thing for me. And I have not opened this, I'm not joking, in 10 years. I'm going to read to you. I've never, I never read this. I'm going to read to you. Let, let you hear that? That is cracking. It cracks. It's so good. Um, and it's called Fraternity by me. It's my first book. And it opens... I, I forgot it opens with this. This is crazy because this, uh, this is live. We, we have no preparation, as if you couldn't tell. This is what the quote opens with. Wow, I forgot to put this in here. I love that I'm reading my own book and telling you how awesome it is. This is the quote it opens with um, by Arthur Chapman. It says, Every generation is a secret society and has incommunicable enthusiasms, tastes, and interests, which are a mystery both to its predecessors and to posterity. And then there's this Robert Frost quote. It says, they would not find me changed from him they knew, only more sure of all I thought was true. Uh, listen, if ever there was a metaphor for my life, I have not changed pretty much since, I don't know, I'm 18. Um, I think this pretty much proves it. I can't do it any other way. Oh, wow, 998 viewers. 999. Uh, okay. Yes, Caleb B. Daniel. This is so Brad Meltzer. It is so me. Um, and, and Cynthia Tony tagged her friend Kelsey Tony. We're watching Storytime with Brad Meltzer. And Johnny Coulter from, from Michigan says, Go Blue. I 100% agree, Johnny. 
go blue. So at the end of the game, guess who won? It wasn't Indiana. Sorry, Indiana. Oh, we just lost two people. Oh, we just got two people more. A thousand viewers. Here we go. A thousand people. Tonight we are doing, in case you didn't know, oh, I forgot the thing. But luckily, it's right here on my son's bed. We're reading, I am Abraham Lincoln. You know what's so awesome? I know, my son's pointing to my head. Oh, I, I know I have the hat, but I wore the hat last time. This is called the something, not a gimmick. Um, but you know what we also have? Heather Dominguez, I love your books too. Oh, I mean, I love my books too. Um, and you're welcome, Gary Parks. I'm glad you love this. I love this too. Uh, this is I Am Abraham Lincoln. And you know what we also have to go along with that? Oh, yeah. Stuff plush Abraham Lincolns. Yay. This is awesome. Isha Bebe Roman. Um, this was actually made. You want to buy this? You can't because uh, it is a one of a kind. And this was made for me by someone who is a reader who also runs a great toy store. I'm not going to tell you who he is. I would tell you who he is, but we're actually hoping, and maybe if you guys would buy it, tell me if you buy one, but I think we're going to put them out next year. So this is the very first one we have. Little plush Abraham Lincoln has a beard, has a bow tie. He's awesome. And this is I am Abraham Lincoln. Here we go. I am Abraham Lincoln. Like how I worked that with the title. When I was little, even young boys were expected to work on the farm and hunt animals for food. And you see a boy saying, maybe you come? And he says, I'll catch up with you later. He says, I preferred to read like other cool people that read. And he says, actually, this is my favorite story, I think, of all the books. He says, I also loved animals. When I was 10 years old, I saw a group of boys playing with some turtles. He says, they found turtles. I love turtles. And then he goes over. And he says, as I got closer, I realized they weren't playing. They were taking hot coals and putting them on top of the turtles to see what would happen. To them, it was harmless fun. They're like, look, it's making the turtle run fast. It's the fastest turtle ever. These are jerks. For you little kids out there, if you want to know what kind of person that is, a jerk. You learn that too here on Storytime. He says, in that moment, I could have just walked away. When you're 10 years old, it's hard to do the right thing. But someone has to. I I'm so That's the best lesson of the whole book. I wrote this book for that lesson. He says, let the turtle go. He says, what would you say? He says, you heard me. Let it go. Those boys let the turtle go. Soon after, I wrote one of my first essays. This is all true about how hurting animals is wrong. He says, this may not seem like a big deal, but back then, most kids and even adults didn't know how to write. In fact, the state of Indiana was so new, schools weren't even built yet. I went to school for ba barely a year. Total. Abe Lincoln, barely a year. But that didn't stop me using chalk. I practiced writing the alphabet on trees. Look, Chris Eliopoulos drew the alphabet on the trees. I even wrote in the dirt in the cornfield, and Dad says, how's Abe, how's the corn coming? He says, it's coming great, Dad. He's really writing his name. When it came to learning, my best teachers were simply books. I love books so much, I once walked six miles. I'm serious, six miles to get one. Six miles, that's too far for a book. And he says, not for this one. And then, you know what's so awesome? All right, it's actually not here. I'm going to show you what's so awesome. So he said, I read while my horse was resting and while waiting in line at the local store and in one of my favorite positions with my feet up on a tree. Remember I told you we hid things in the book? Look at the spine of the book. Secret code right there. It's awesome. Before long, I had read every book in the neighborhood from the Bible to Aesop's Fables to Robinson Crusoe. But one of my favorites, a, favorites, a book about George Washington. And I'm going to give you a hint. Guess what book we're doing next? George Washington, who interestingly did not read a book when he was little about Abraham Lincoln. Huh. That means little George Washington was saying, Pooey on you, Abraham Lincoln. I'd even put my favorite parts on pieces of wood. Did you know that George Washington was a friend of men? You're a strange boy, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, but I'm going to be on the penny someday. She says, what's a penny? Great joke. When I was 22 years old, we moved to Illinois, where I met a group known as the Clary Grove Boys. You think you're better than us, these bullies said? I never said that. He says, don't be chicken. Show us what you got. Everyone in town knew they were bullies. I didn't like bullies. But I was a new guy. When they challenged me, I didn't have much choice. I agree, Kara Simpson Stevens. I love secret codes, too. Today, some may call it a fight, but it was really a wrestling match. This is actually happening. And in so many history books, if you look, they actually get the story wrong. They say it was a fight. And then it wasn't, that it was, he was like punching people, but it was a wrestling match. It was me against their leader, Jack Armstrong. 
Back then, the rule was, once you grabbed your opponent, you couldn't break your hold. And look at that. Wham! Sound effects. Comics. But Jack did, so he could grab my leg and send me flying. I wasn't mad I lost. Everyone loses sometimes. What got me upset? He had cheated. He says, he didn't play fair. He says, maybe you want to fight us all. This is why you love Abraham Lincoln. Watch this. He says, within seconds, they all surrounded me. They were waiting for me to back down or to lose my cool. Instead, cal calmly and confidently, I told them, if I have to, I will fight every single one of you, fair and square. Come on, man. Abraham Lincoln's going to fight the whole crew. Oh, that's so awesome. They knew I meant it. And he says, you're a strange kid, Abraham Lincoln, but you've got guts. And he says, you know, I'm going to be on the penny. What's a penny? Sometimes the hardest fights don't reveal a winner, but they do reveal character, especially when you're fighting for something you believe in. Still, not every struggle brought a victory. Years later, I saw a group of slaves chained together in a boat on the Ohio River. Back then, not all people were free. Some were slaves. Just because of the color of their skin, they were forced to work without pay. They were treated terribly. This is where Chris Eliopoulos, I love this piece of art. This is amazing. He says, I never forgot the sight of that boat. I didn't do anything that day, but for years, the memory of those people, it haunted me. You're right, Lisa Klein. It is a very cool lesson, and it is true. That's why it's even cooler. I was still thinking about them when I became president. I lost four elections. Tell your kids this. Abraham Lincoln lost four elections before I got the big job. Four. America was facing one of the greatest fights in our history, the Civil War. One side wanted to let the slaves go free. The other side, we want to keep slavery going and we'll fight anyone who says otherwise. I agree, Carol Powers. I must buy all of these books from my classroom. I would totally do that if I were you. If I had turned my head and looked away, I would have avoided the fight. But if I would learned anything in life, it was this. When somebody needed help, I was no good at looking away. I'm sorry, I cannot allow that. What would you say? You heard me. These people will be free. The Civil War lasted longer than anyone thought. The fighting took a terrible toll. People on our side were ready to give up. To re-energize them, we held a big event in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The main speaker gave a speech that lasted nearly two hours. I gave a speech that lasted two minutes and used only 271 words. The most important five words I used? You know it. All men are created equal. Soon after, I helped pass a law that ended slavery. In America, I freed all those people. Then we ended the Civil War. By the way, look at the handsome guy right here. By the way, these books are all accurate. I was at the Civil War. You know how many people wrote me that their kids think that I was really there? This is one of the, there's actually, I think, four spots where I'm hidden in this book. This is one of them. To all the kids out there, I will not lie to you. I was there. I was absolutely in the Civil War. As a result, we didn't just bring together these United States of America. We proved that this government of the people, by the people, and for the people would be dedicated to freedom and justice. He says, you know, in his speech, he told the crowd that no one would remember what he said at Gettysburg. She says, you want to bet? In life, strength can take many forms, but there's nothing quite as strong as standing up for someone who needs it. This is the lessons I write for my own kids. No matter where you're from, or how little you have, one thing that can never be taken away from you is your voice. When you find something you believe in, use your voice. And when you see injustice, speak louder than you've ever spoken before. When you do, it'll never be forgotten. And the girl says, look, he's on the penny. Now here's the thing, we're gonna do it again. This is the last page. I'm not gonna show you what it looks like. Close your eyes, and remember, I can see you Close your eyes right now. I'm going to read to you what I told the artist to write and how, what to draw. Close your eyes. Every kid out there, I'm not joking, I can see you. It's, um, and this is what it says. It says a shot of, I want you to imagine this as I tell it to you. It's a shot of Abraham Lincoln standing on what would be Martin Luther King Jr.'s podium at the Lincoln Memorial. But he's facing us. In other words, he's facing us with his back to the thousands of people crowding the mall, all the way back to the Washington Monument. As packed as it was during the march on Washington, like the Amelia Earhart parade shot, this is the victory moment. Got that in your head? I told Chris Eliopoulos to draw this. You got it in your head, what it looks like? This is what he drew. I am Abraham Lincoln. I will never stop fighting for what's right. 
And I hope you'll remember that when you speak your mind and speak for others, there's no more powerful way to be heard. That's the end today. And on the back it says, my favorite thing, I'm Abraham Lincoln, I will always speak my mind and speak for others. Um, I love that I get to share this one to you. This, I, I will say, of all the ones we've done, and any, anyone that asked me this, I agree, Lorraine Ramos, it is the best way to spend a Sunday. Right now, there are thousands, millions of people watching sports, and you, 1,200 people, 1,200 people are watching this. I love you for that. I do. I do. Because it means you stand for something um, that can stand for other people as well. 1,300 people. I appreciate that. Um, now we have a big announcement. This is awesome. So other questions. Um, I agree, Heather Dominguez. I am so inspiring. Um, and I joke, but I love these books. And um, not because I wrote them. These aren't my stories. All I'm doing is channeling these amazing people. I promised you that I would have an announcement. And so here's our announcement. We are going to do a special next one that's going to happen of story time with me. And it's going to take place not on next Sunday. It's going to take place next Friday night because we're going to have our first ever actual guest. I, I pray that our Wi-Fi is working in our house. Otherwise, this guest is going to be sitting in my seven-year-old's room. And I'm going to tell you who that guest is. Anyone want to guess right now? Guess who the guest is, and we'll see if we can guess. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to guess. Are my shirts available? Kelly Langford. Of course, do I, of course they're available. Check it out. Woo, dream big. Um, yes, go to OrdinaryPeopleChangeTheWorld.com or go to bradmelcher.com. You can buy them there. Um, nice, nice swim goggles, Daryl Wolf. These are not swim goggles. And don't think, first of all, I want you to know, I actually ordered real goggles. I didn't get him in time, but I'm going to wear them next time just to spite you, Daryl. Um, okay, so the guest next time, this is who it's going to be. You ready for it? I'm not even joking. This person is coming. I think he's coming to our house. Um, and our guest that we're reading with next week wrote a little book called Oh, yeah, we're going to have Captain Underpants in my house. How awesome is that? Uh, and someone just tagged my friend Judd. That's ridiculous. Um, we're doing Captain Underpants. We're going to be reading that, and we're going to be reading some more fun. It's going to be me and Dave Pilkey, and, uh, which shows you this is already insane. Uh, don't tell him all the technical problems that happened. Tell his publicist everything worked great. Love Dave Pilkey in his house. Love what he does for kids. And love you all for joining us today on Storytime with Brad. Thanks for sharing this with everyone you love. And we'll see you next Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday night. Don't make plans. Don't go out. I know you're not making plans because you're here with me now. And really, let's be honest, we're all home together on Friday night. I love you. Bye.